planetary season. I'm a member of the board of directors of the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. We're here on Sunday morning of our first weekend of a nine-day event. Um, this is our 49th year for the Balloon Fiesta. And we're managed by a board of directors of 24 volunteers, plus about another thousand volunteers who come out and help us out during the week. We also have a paid staff of about 20 people who work year-round on the event uh, to get it ready here. Um, in addition to our paid staff, and we, we have to pay a number of people like um, our public safety people and people who help clean the field and things like that. But about a thousand different volunteers uh, who work during the week, everything from being greeters to working in the official merchandise tents to being on chase crews for balloons. They can come and volunteer to be on a chase crew. Um, so all different kind of jobs that they can come down here and help us with. It's, uh field. What's the acreage? The acreage here, the total park, is around 250 acres. Um, with, but that includes all of our parking areas to the north and the south of the field and frankly to the east of the field. Um, we have 250 launch squares on the uh, on the property here and so we can launch about 250 balloons um, in one wave as you saw this morning and then the second wave of another 250 or so balloons so um, we can accommodate a massive number of balloons here on the field. Now next year is going to be the 50th. Anything special planned? We have lots of special things planned, but they're all top secret at this point uh, so that we can build up the excitement as we lead up to next year's events. But yes, uh, we're going to do uh, a number of different things that will be celebrating our 50th uh, year. My name is Dale Ritchie. And, then, and what, do, what do you fly? I fly the cow balloon for Cremeland Dairies, okay. Arabelle the, the flying cow. Yeah. And tell us about your uh, balloon. Uh, well, it's uh, one of the biggest shapes here. It's, uh, in fact, it, probably at this moment, it is the biggest shape here. Um, weighs about 950 pounds. Uh, so um, it's uh, it's been flying in Albuquerque since 1989. So it's the longest longest corporate program uh, actually of any of the any of the and shapes. You flown right it now. in Wisconsin too. We yeah back in the back in the early days of the cow when we uh, the first cow that we built uh, we flew it for the Wisconsin Mar Milk Marketing Board in uh, in Wisconsin. And then since then, it's been sold to Cremeland Dairies, and that's who we've been flying and it for. And it's owned since. by dairy farmers. Of it's uh, Cremeland is owned by the Dairy Farmers of America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk about well, tell, how many people help you do this? Uh, well, we've got a crew of right now probably close to 30 that, people. That's but what they're doing back there. They're packing everything up and ready to go. Yeah. So, uh, but usually, you know, we can usually do it with about 15 people. But uh, but like I said, the more the merrier, and and it, it is a big heavy balloon, so it's nice to have lots of lots of people helping. Do you do other events besides here? Uh, well, with Creamland, we pretty much just do Albuquerque now, but we uh, we used to do uh, more events like in Houston and Dallas and Louisville, Kentucky, up in uh, Las Vegas and Reno. Uh, they are actually talking about possibly starting to take the cow out to a, some of those events again. Mm -hmm. Uh, now with the new owners uh, of the of the of the company, so that that's going to be good. We'll be able to travel a little bit more with it and and uh, spread it around a bit. Yeah. Uh, where, is, where was this balloon made? Well, the original balloon was built in uh, Bristol, England, in uh, at Cameron Balloons. Wow. Uh, then we uh, we uh, retired that balloon in uh, 1996. We built yeah. another one. Uh, then the third one was built in uh, in 2004.
with Jerry Garcia. He's from Albuquerque, and he has 41 years of experience. Um, Jerry, tell me more about the history of ballooning. Well, ballooning started uh, with uh, two brothers. They're Montgolfier, mm -hmm. and uh, it's 1783. They, they owned a paper factory, and of course this story goes several different ways with different pilots, but uh, they went outside their paper factory and uh, saw smoke coming up out of the chimneys of the homes, and they figured if they can capture this smoke in some kind of a bag, maybe it'll go up with the smoke, and the black smoke. So they went in and they built a big paper bag, and this was pretty good size. They decorated it up real fancy, put a little platform on the bottom of it. And they went outside and built a huge fire and started throwing all kinds of uh, objects in there to turn this uh, fire black, the smoke black in the fire. So it's, they put their platform or the balloon over it and it started to rise up. Well, they grabbed a chicken, duck, and pig and put it on the platform because they were afraid there was no oxygen above the earth and they didn't want to sacrifice a human. So. They went ahead and did that, and it lifted up off the ground, went across the countryside, and it landed in this field full of peasants. And they saw this thing with all the black smoke building out of it. They thought it was a demon that just flew in. Well, they went over there and totally destroyed it with their pitchforks. No one knows what happened to the animals, but you know they, they were sacrificed in one way or another. Well, there was a French nobleman that saw what was going on, and he went to the Montgolfiers and told them he'd be honored to fly in their new contraption. So they went back to their paper factory, and they did build a bigger balloon, but this time out of silk. And they put a lot of fancy decorations on it, put another platform on it, went back out, built another big fire, and got all the black, black smoke they could out of it again because they didn't know it was just the heat that caused it to rise. They thought it was a smoke. So the French nobleman got on the platform and it started to lift up and went back across the countryside and it landed back in that same field again and these peasants came back after it again. Well, he stepped out with a bottle of champagne in his hand and said, the they finally decided that anybody sophisticated enough to drink champagne couldn't be the demon. So that's how we celebrate our first landings for first time flyers. Or if we land in somebody's property, we honor, offer them a bottle of champagne. And it's just a part of the custom of ballooning now, the champagne. Well, the Irish got involved in it too, and everybody figured, well, it's got to be the alcohol is why the Irish got involved. But they came up with their own prayer, and it's the Irish Balloonist Prayer. And we like to say this prayer after every flight. This is for the next day. And the prayer goes like this. The winds have welcomed you with softness. The sun has blessed you with its warm hands. You have flown so high and so well that God has joined you in laughter and has set you gently back into the loving arms of Mother Earth. Amen. And that's what we like to end our flight with. With these other two people, were they first time flyers? Yes, these are our first time flyers. We, we try to keep this as a secret so that uh, first time flyers don't know, but as many times as it go, happens now, a lot of them do know what's going on. But these that I had did not know what was going to happen. So there are some that are surprised of what happens on this for their first flight. Uh, this is the, you know, we like to give people the first flights because they're really amazed by what goes on with ballooning and how the balloon is flown and how we control it. So it, it's very interesting to people that have never seen it before. Talk about your balloon itself, where it was made? Uh, my balloon was made in uh, New Jersey. It's a custom nine balloon. It's 100,000 cubic feet. Uh, we call it Tentai. And that's a Japanese word for heavenly spirit. Um, it's, it's the second one that looks like it right now. It, it only has about 100 hours on it. And it's just something that I enjoy doing. And uh, of course my wife along with me and all our crew, it's just, it gets in your blood and you just can't stop. It, it, 
it's just there and it, it's, it's special people, I would say, are interested in it and there's not too many in this world that can, that fly balloons, but uh, we get a lot of them here. There's over 500 balloons here and it, it's a, a worldwide event. So we, we have a great time with it. We like meeting all the people from all over the world. Uh, you'll never see this in any place else. is Mr. Z. He was built in Brazil and my husband was looking for a special shape to buy and he saw it advertised. They, they have a business model that they build balloon, special shapes balloons down there and then they bring them up here to sell them. So he saw that one online and called me into his office and said, what do you think of this one? Because he was thinking of getting a special shape and I said, oh, he's cute. So we decided to buy Mr. Z and he was built in honor of the launch directors here in Albuquerque and other places, but I think, I don't know if it started here, but they're called zebras because of the black and white stripes, which are like referee type uniforms. But then here in Albuquerque, they all kind of dress up to, to emphasize the zebra part and we're the zebra balloon. You want to know about the competition? A lot of the competition is with a large X on the ground. So they, they put fabric, strips on the ground and then the balloonists have a little um, bean bag thing that's about this big and then it's it's got a long streamer on it so they have to come over they have to maneuver they have to find the winds that are right for them so that they can get here and then they try to get as close above the x as they can and they drop their marker it's it's called a marker um, and then they have to get it as close as they can to the center of the X. But it's not always an X. Sometimes there are two triangles that meet in the center. Sometimes it's called a minimum distance, so they have to get them as close together, but they have to be within the triangles. Sometimes it's maximum distance. They have other kinds of shapes that they do at some of the more sophisticated competitions. Here, they usually, I think, just do an X. Or, and then sometimes they have a pole with a prize on it. They have to put a ring that's about this big over the pole and then they win a prize of money or whatever.
Hi, I'm Joe Ballingy. What do you do here? Uh, I'm a lunch director. They also call us zebras for some unknown reason, but yeah. Lunch directors, uh, nobody takes off unless we give them permission to take off. So the pilots put on the show, but we kind of control the show. How long have you been This is my seventh year as a zebra, but uh, this is my 26th or 7th year at Balloon Fiesta. Before that, I was on Chase Crew. And I decided after 19 years of being on Chase Crew, I wanted to see Fiesta from a different perspective. And uh, I applied to be a zebra, and now here I am. What do you like about being a zebra? We get to be ambassadors for Balloon Fiesta and for Albuquerque and for New Mexico. Um, we meet and greet the public. We meet and greet the pilots and the crews that come from literally around the world and around the country. Uh, so we get to associate with a whole lot of really cool people. It's just fun. I mean, we, we just... I, I just like it because uh, there's so many people, so much happening, and it's a beautiful event with all the balloons. It's just be great to be a part of something like this. What, what kind of criteria does the balloonists have to have before you give the okay to take off? Oh, well, okay, what we say is we do a safe coordinated launch, which means that, first of all, safety. Before we can give anybody clearance to fly, we're checking around them. We're looking side to side to make sure there's nothing in their way on the, on the side if another balloon is close by. We're, more importantly, we're looking overhead to make sure that there's no balloon flying uh, above them to where we would launch them and they would bump in another one. So that's really, really key. We're, we're watching 360 around that balloon to make sure that before we give them uh, okay to launch, that they're going to be going into a safe space. Uh, coordinated, we're looking side to side to see what the other zebras are doing, what the other balloons are doing. We're also looking past our balloon to the next balloons coming up, uh, thinking ahead, coordinating, trying to make sure that everybody goes off in a nice coordinated manner so we're, nobody's bumping into each other and, and everybody's kept safe. Some balloons toward the end of launch, and it's always toward the end, they're given the option, do you want to take off or you can, we call static, they can just stand up. And some balloons decide for various reasons that eh, we'll, just, we'll just stand up. It's a way to put on a show for the crowd because it gives people the opportunity to come over close to the balloon that's not flying and they can look at it and take pictures and talk to the pilot and crew, that sort of stuff. Um, some of them, they make the decision just because I don't need to fly today, or maybe I'm not really happy with the winds. So there's multiple reasons. But if you see after the flight, the main flight, there's balloons uh, just standing there, it's perfectly okay. They have to coordinate with the zebras uh, to let us know. When we go up to them, what are, you, what are your plans? And they'll tell us, I'm just going to stay on the ground. Excellent. As long as the, the, uh, we get word that that field is clear to do that, uh, that's not a problem. Middle, there's a low layer that's slow, there's a middle layer that's fast. He's 
going down. You just blow it. We got a little. We're, we're climbing a little. We're climbing 120 foot. Okay. Just drop us easy. I'll try. Those three are very close to the ground, so they're, they're skimming for a place to land in. They're probably 100 feet out. Got to figure those trees are 50 to 70 feet out. The pumpkin is flying right beside us. We're fixing to cross the Rio now. The wind is twisting us. Oh. Can we land in there? Good, thank you. Using the squeezer. Bob O'Brien from Wapaka, Wisconsin here in lovely Albuquerque for probably about my 20th time. Uh, I tend to come back every, about every year lately, but every other year we make, a, make the trip out from Wapaka, Wisconsin to Albuquerque. So we're here again this year with our new balloon, a new watermelon balloon. So this is my second watermelon balloon. My original balloon was the Maloon. Uh, that was uh, a 97 Lindstrand hot air balloon. Flew that for quite a few years. She got a little old, had to retire her. Had another balloon that I was flying, but two years ago I decided to build another watermelon balloon. So this is manufactured by Lindstrand Balloons. They're out of uh, Hanover. Uh, no, actually they're out of Galena, Illinois now. And uh, this balloon was made uh, uh, about a year ago. So this is the first time that it's in Albuquerque. So we're showing it off here in Albuquerque this year. So we're having quite a bit of fun with it. It's a Lindstrand 90,000 cubic foot balloon. It's uh, uh, just a standard balloon shape, but with the artwork on the balloon, it makes it look like a watermelon balloon. So my first balloon, Maloon. My second balloon is now Seed Quill. So this is my second balloon. All right, I'm asked, how did I get involved with ballooning? My wife and I, about 30 years ago, went out to a friend's wedding in Sedona, Arizona. We spent the night in Tucumcari, New Mexico, got up early because we were meeting people for lunch in Sedona. As we were driving through Albuquerque, the festival was going on. Hundreds of balloons in the air. Me being who I am, I'm behind the wheel, I'm driving. My wife sitting next to me, oh, this is lovely. Me, oh yeah, I'm driving. You know, down the road I go. She puts her foot down and says, if this is still going on, when we come back from Sedona, we're going for a balloon ride. Sure enough, it was still going on. So I went for a balloon ride. It was like a key going into a lock. I loved it so much. Went back home. Now, 30 years ago, we didn't have a lot of internet that we have today. Try and find somebody to sell you a hot air balloon. It was very difficult. But eventually, through some diligent research, etc., I was able to find people that were into hot air ballooning. And we, uh, we got into the sport, bought a balloon, learned to fly it. It is a uh, licensed balloon. You, uh, you have to have a pilot's license. So I had to go through pilot training, did all of that. But that's basically the story, how I got into it. Six, five, four, three, two, one, flicker bow.
like what you're doing holding onto this rope? My name is Gary Cox. I'm from Colorado Springs, Colorado. And I'm on the crown line just trying to keep the boy steady. Uh, my name's Rich Lawhorn, and I'm the Humpty Dumpty pilot and owner. I've owned Humpty Dumpty since 1996, and Humpty and I have been here at Fiesta every year since 1996, with the exception of last year when there was not an official event. Now you're one of these special shapes. What's, what's different from other balloons? Um, the special shapes always seem to draw a bit more interest, and uh, everybody really seems to have their own special special shape, one that they love the most. And uh, Humpty's kind of been an icon for Albuquerque Fiesta since 96, and uh, we've enjoyed bringing him here. He, he's uh, brought a lot of joy to people who, who've seen him and smile at him. And uh, I don't know if you've noticed when you were back further out, but as you walk around, Humpty's eyes are designed so that they follow you as you walk from one side of the balloon to the other. So when you're looking at Humpty. Humpty is one of the easier special shapes to, uh, to put down and put back into the bag. Uh, we've got another special shape balloon, uh, the Snowbird, which is the size of a 12-story apartment building. And it takes a crew to 12 to 20 to put that one away. Humpty we can put away with six people comfortably. Now today, uh, explain what they're doing and why you're not going up. Okay, today, uh, while it looks great on the ground for the balloons, the winds aloft starting below 500 feet above the ground are rather brisk and at 500 feet they turn directly towards the mountain. And the flights off in that direction are in parts of the uh, Sandia Reservation where um, they don't have very many roads and it makes it difficult to retrieve the balloons. Um, and if we end up on the side of the mountain, it's uh, doubly harder to retrieve them from there. So we're not flying this morning. We don't want to put all these balloons up and have, uh, have them land in places that aren't very easy to retrieve.